Okay, so we're looking at experiment four for this week, where a pharmaceutical company have claimed that they can make aspirin by a better method than the standard method. Standard method for making aspirin is starting from benzene, a six carbon ringed aromatic containing alternating double and single carbon to carbon bonds. Normally, to make aspirin, we convert it into the alcohol, which on a benzene ring is called phenol. We can then, from the phenol, react it under acid conditions to produce this carboxylic acid group on the benzene ring. And then finally, perform an esterification reaction produce this ester link on the molecule. And this is aspirin as we know it today. Although be aware that the actual active ingredient in aspirin is salicylic acid. Aspirin is ingested by the patient. The salicylic acid, which is the active ingredient, is too caustic to be ingested. You would just gag on it. So a pharmaceutical company is claiming that they have a better method of making aspirin. They claim that they have a more natural method. So let's take a look at what they are proposing. Okay, so your reaction today is starting with the methyl salicylate. And this is considered to be a more natural synthesis of the aspirin because it avoids the use of nasty benzene, which is a carcinogen. So you'll work out the mass for 10 millimoles of the methyl salicylate and you'll mix it together with the appropriate amount of sodium hydroxide and you'll get a double acid base reaction. The sodium hydroxide acting as a base will pick off a hydrogen from the alcohol group. It is also going to react as a nucleophile. and attack at that carbon to oxygen double bond, the carbonyl bond. So the methoxy group on the end of the molecule is actually going to snap off. And after 30 minutes of reflux, heating this solution at boiling temperature for 30 minutes, you should produce this double sodium salt by the end of that 30 minute, minute period. If the solution looks oily, or if you still get that wintergreen smell after 30 minutes, reflux for perhaps an extra 10 minutes to try and get rid of that smell and oily look. Once that period is done, then you're ready for the second part of the reaction. So for the first part of the experiment, you'll have your hot plate, your aluminium block on top, the round bottom flask rests on top of the aluminium block. You'll then clamp the round bottom flask at the neck, put your condenser on top, you connect the bottom line to the water coming in, so the water comes in, rises up and then leaves by the top aperture. And once the mixture starts to reflux, once it gets to the boiling temperature, which you'll see with signs of vapours in the condenser as the liquid reforms. You'll be able to start your clock and let the reaction reflux for at least 30 minutes. So once the reflux and the first part of the reaction is finished, the second step of the reaction is to add in free molarity sulfuric acid and get a second acid base reaction protonate on the oxygen here, and protonate on the oxygen here, the sodium will fall off and will produce the methyl salicylate as our final product. We cover that initial product by vacuum filtration and then perform a recrystallization using a fresh sample of water. Remember the crystallization 
should make your raw material soluble when hot so the solution will be colorless and clear and as it cools back down again you'll start to precipitate out pure crystals of the salicylic acid. Get it cold in an ice bath once more, vacuum filter off your crystals and then present to your uh, instructor for later examination. So for the final analysis of your raw product, perform a melting point on that material and then compare that to the melting point for the salicylic acid from the textbook. Do they match? So therefore, is this chemically the same compound or not? You decide. You'll also perform a 50-50 melting point by taking some of the pre-prepared salicylic acid, mixing it with your own sample in a mortar and pestle, and then perform a melting point on this 50-50 mix. If there is no deviation in the melting point, then we probably have the same two compounds mixed together. And it gives us a second method of verifying the purity with the mixed melting point. The lab report will be due in two weeks. Filter off the product once more and collect those nice clean crystals and present to your instructor for examination. And then just screw it up by saying the examination instead of examination. Oh, I have to do that all again. Do they match? Do you think that they are the same compound or are they chemically different? Before, before ah, ha ha! Hannah, that was your fault, Martin.